and friends. But with reunions of plenty on deck, the holiday could be anything but enjoyable if you end up at the ER. Right now we're joined by Dr. Kenneth Perry from Trident Medical Center. Dr. Perry, today known as Blackout Wednesday. Uh, of course, you got family in town, you got uh, tomorrow off, college kids gathering for their post-graduation reunions, people gonna hit up their exes. All these things uh, can be pretty dangerous and get people to go in the ER, right? Absolutely. We know that between today and tomorrow, this is one of the deadliest holidays when it comes to alcohol consumption and certainly dangers on the road and things that bring people to the emergency department. Now, you're in the ER a lot. Uh, are you seeing an increase of patients? Are you guys kind of prepping, adding extra staff tonight? So, luckily enough, we have been in such a ready situation because of the pandemic this is certainly just another day for us we're really thinking that maybe with some of the limitations and some of the restrictions that this might be one of the lighter years that we've seen well that's a good thing uh, car crashes of course a major worry people driving impaired what are some of the other common injuries that you guys experience uh, on the days leading up to thanksgiving Certainly what we're going to see are things that have a lot, of do, lot to do with either cognition and impaired cognition because of that. So either falling down stairs, injuring people. There's also that drinking while you're getting prepped for the meal. So there's certainly going to be knife injuries and cuts and things like that that we're certainly going to see between today and tomorrow. Hmm. Uh, let's talk COVID concerns as well, Dr. Perry. I know your folks are actually going to come down. They had to change their uh, plans last minute. What's your advice for those traveling from other states uh, here and staying with family this year? I think the risk is really determined by the people who are traveling and from where they're traveling and who they're going to be with. So if you're going to get together with multiple different people from multiple different households, multiple different states, I think the risk is certainly there. Now, if you're able to minimize that risk and you've been able to keep yourself isolated or even quarantined yourself for the last 14 days or so, then your risk is probably a little bit lower. Again, this is going to be really person to person dependent it might even be the time as we've seen and as you guys were just talking about the air travel might not be the best option because it certainly is going to put you around some people that you're not going to be able to control so but it's certainly yeah certainly a, a change in plans here in the perry household you understand this disease a lot better than i do here and, and many other people out there uh, talk about eating inside versus outside does that really make a difference if people are in your home for an extended period of time I think it's going to have to do with how close you are with these people in physical contact. If you're in a really small room, we saw this towards the beginning of the pandemic with restaurants that stayed open, really small restaurants with very little air movement. This is probably going to be a pretty high risk situation. You're going to be talking, you're going to be within the that six foot radius of people. That's the reason why we were really urging people to get outside. This is going to increase the airflow and hopefully decrease the amount of of just aerosolized droplets from one person to the other. So if you do have people over, certainly try to put them in as large of a space as possible and outside would even be better. Uh, doctor, you're in the medical field, of course. Uh, something that I'm worried about because I'm gonna have to make a couple of sides this year is food poisoning. Uh, obviously, do you see an increase of that in the days after Thanksgiving? You know, it's funny, we, we don't see it on Thanksgiving Day. It usually comes from the leftovers because what ends up happening is people forget about it on Thanksgiving Day. We all know you leave the food spread out for a number of hours and then all of a sudden you think about it and then you put it in the refrigerator. So food safety is certainly gonna be an issue. Anything, the, the one that we all think about in emergency medicine, it's on our boards and it's certainly something we see is anything based with mayonnaise that's gonna be left out, anything like that, that can certainly cause you problems and that can cause an acute onset of nausea and vomiting which sometimes is not stopped without medications and and even a trip to the emergency department for some fluids and some other supportive care yeah that's kind of what i wanted to ask you a follow-up here when do you know it's time to go to the er in that situation it's all going to be based on your ability to stay hydrated. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, certainly a problem, but at the same time, we want you to be able to know that you're still having, you're still making urine, you're still making the, um, you're, you're still able to, to keep yourself hydrated. Well, I don't know you, but now I'm hungry after hearing that conversation. Uh, Dr. Perry, thank you so much for joining us. Great tips right there. We wish you a happy Thanksgiving. You as well.